Hey guys, Professor Bill of Comic Book University and Superman issue number two. All right, this is this is going deep. This is going real deep. So the entire Earth is in the Phantom Zone, and only Superman can apparently stop them. So this is called the Unity Saga Part Two, and Brian Michael Bendis did the script. Ivan Reese did the pencils. Uh, okay, this is going to be harder because I can't hardly see these. Okay, shoot. There's a lot of people who are involved in the making of this. Joe Prado and Eau Claire Albert. I can't read these, and it's a different, it's a strange white version of a color on a weird background. But they did the inks for some of the pages. Alex Sinclair did the colors. Josh Reed did the letters. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go into the, the who did the covers. Some people did the colors. Uh, the covers, um, and some of the people who actually did the comic book itself, which makes me happy. Anyway, so we start off with this unnamed group uh, in a in a strange, uncharted planet that nobody's ever going to hear from again, probably. Although there's probably a Hawkman there once, and um, the Thanagarians are coming to attack. I'm like, all right, hold your ground. We're going to get ready. We're going to charge in a moment. Okay, let's get ready to charge. Hey, they brought Rogal Tsar with them. Retreat, retreat, run away, flee. Like, the, the one dude's just completely freaked out. And everybody's like, dude, what's the matter with you? And they get, of course, systematically slaughtered. So that was interesting. <laughs> and of course, who more warlike than the Thanagarians? After that, we go into the typical Brian Michael Bendis trope for Superman, which I'm madly in love with. And that is, establish who Superman is. I love that he does that. I love that. We just get a little bit of him talking and we get to see what he does and who he is. And man, Reese does an amazing job with the uh, the pencils in this man. Like just all the all the people involved in this. That is just gorgeous. My God, that's a gorgeous cover. And yes, there's a Hawkman appearance. There's a um, Plastic Man appearance. And yeah, a couple, a couple of people show up. Aquaman with his longer hair again. Love that. All right. So these guys are all still connected by a psychic link. And uh, the entire time, Martian Manhunter was like, what? You said to keep the link on, right? He never turned the link off and, and the Justice League members start to get sick. Not Superman, because he's made of sterner stuff. Plus, he's got the, um, the mental labyrinth in his head to make sure that he doesn't get hurt. Uh, Tovak Ro or whatever it's called. Anyway, so he realizes he's in the phantom zone and this is really bad he recognized that he knows that and at one point he comes across um well rogal czar is out there and we get a lot of his internal dialogue which is interesting and he comes across the nuclear man with a superman cape but he comes across the freaking nuclear man what the heck is up with that um yeah he doesn't last very long but this is the first appearance in a comic book of nuclear man and there's definitely a different version anyway because like if there's a if somebody actually had the audacity to make a superman 4 comic book ugh, epic fail anyway yeah this is cool <laughs> this was this is actually pretty cool um there's also a very distinct uh definitive uh i don't know ending <laughs> to that conflict rogal czar and and the nuclear man so superman and rogal czar face each other they see each other from a distance and both of them realize that they're not ready to deal with each other yet. The trick is Superman's the one who pulls back first. He pulls back first and he starts flying away. The main reason is because he knows that he himself, he's in the Phantom Zone and he's only going to have his superpowers for but so long. He's going to eventually run out of the use of the stored up solar energy within him. There is no good and proper um, yellow sun in the Phantom Zone. So he's only got his powers for a little bit. Rogal Czar is saying, yeah, I'm going to need an army. So in the next issue, they're promising a, uh, a dead Kryptonian army or something to that effect. <laughs> and um, interesting, very interesting. A bunch of other things happen. I'm not going to actually give you the ending, but it's, it's, um, yeah, this is like, you, you got to follow this. This is amazing. This is amazing. Oh, the Kryptonian Damned. That's what we're going to see pretty soon. Rogal Czar's army of the Kryptonian Damned. Um, the, the, the most interesting part of this is that you kind of have to go and check out Supergirl, issue number 21, which I did also review 
I'll probably be posting that as soon as I finish posting this will be 15 minutes later. But anyway, the point is, make sure you go and check out that also. There are some first appearances in that comic book also. And if you want to unravel the mystery of Rogal Czar, I think that the bulk of that is going to be in that comic book. That one is not written by Bendis. Um, just go and check that out. Check out the review at the very least to see if you're interested. But yeah, there's... Um, I'm going to have to read that clearly, not just the, the issue, like that arc, because yeah, that was interesting. That was interesting. I actually read that before I did this review, <laughs> so check it out. All right, guys, that's going to be it for me. Fantastic comic book. I'm digging this. I love what Bendis is doing with uh, all of the Superman comic books, and I like what's happening right now in Supergirl. All right, guys, Professor Bill Comic Book University, class dismissed.